Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm talking about partial application and currying and the differences between them. The reason this is coming up is someone recently commented on a video that I made early on in the channel where I discussed partial application, but I kind of conflated it with currying. And so I realized that I should take a moment to record a new video that's a bit of a follow-up and really emphasizes the distinction between those two things. So let's dive into it. To start, I have some definitions that I wrote, so you can take them with a grain of salt, verify them online however you need to, uh, but these are how I understand partial application and currying currently. So partial application is where, let me read it verbatim, it'll be clearer, a function is partially applied uh, when it is given fewer arguments than it expects and returns a new function expecting the remaining arguments. Of capitalized important words there. Currying, a function is curried when it takes one argument at a time and returns a new function expecting the next argument. So what that means overall is that partial application is something that is done to a function. A function is partially applied from the outside, whereas a function is curried, uh, function being curried I should say, is a behavior of that function you if you receive a curried function it already knows that it's curried and it behaves in a way that reflects the fact that it is curried whereas any function can be from the outside partially applied so if that doesn't make it totally clear then we'll dive into some examples and hopefully that will make everything a bit easier to understand so first of all we have this normal in other words not curried function it's called sum four numbers and it just expects all of its arguments in the argument list, as we would expect. And then it just adds them all together. This will be just four numbers and returns the sum. Fairly straightforward. We could manually curry this function. This is just a note here. We don't actually use this, so it's commenting out. Uh, by writing just with a bunch of lambdas, the first argument, and then it would return a new function that is expecting the next argument, which would return a function that's expecting the next argument, which would return a function that's expecting the next argument, which would return the function body, which would evaluate into a value and return that value. That's what currying looks like if you do it manually, but as you'll see when we get into mixing partial application and currying, we don't always know the structure of the function and we don't want to do this manually all the time. So we will be using a curry helper function that accepts a function and curries it for us. But we'll get to that in a moment. So first thing, uh, just normal function invocation. We're familiar with this. We take some four numbers, we give it four numbers, and when we get the results, it is the sum of those four numbers. And all we should keep seeing as we go through here are functions and the number 10. All right, so what happens if we partially apply a normal, in other words, not curried function? Well, we can do partial application natively in JavaScript with the bind method. I have an entire video about the bind method because it's very strange. Uh, there's some odd design choices there. Sorry about the motorcycle outside. And it allows you to do two things, which is pass in the first argument as the context for the returned function, and as the rest of the arguments provide values for the argument list to the function that's going to be returned. So in other words, set the context and partially apply the function that you're calling bind on. So what we're doing here is we're taking some four numbers and we are partially applying it with the values one and two meaning that one will be assigned to, or assigned as the value for w, and two will be assigned as the value for x. So we're creating a closure around those arguments, and then we are returning a new function that already knows about those arguments or those values, and it's waiting for two more arguments. And so what we can do down here is take partially applied some four numbers, and give it those arg and give it those arguments that it's expecting. So in this case, it's expecting two more, so we give it three and four, and 
if we console log the results, it will be 10 because it's the sum of all those numbers. And now that it has all of the arguments that it's expecting, it can properly evaluate the function body. Now here's an, an important note. We could take this partially applied sum for numbers and instead of giving it two arguments, we could only give it one. In other words, we could partially apply the partially applied function. And so if we just give it three instead of three and four, we end up with a more partially applied sum for numbers. And then we could get the final results by passing it that last value that it expects. And now you'll notice we give it one argument and then we give it one argument. And this is where people start getting confused about partial application and currying. Because if you partially apply a function with each argument individually, it kind of looks like currying. But it's important to remember the difference. This function, this sum, uh, sum for numbers function, it doesn't know anything about partial application. So it, and wh whereas if it was curried, it would know about this accepting one argument at a time behavior and it would require it. However, this is happening from the outside. So they're not exactly the same thing, even if they look like they're very much the same thing. And that'll become a bit clearer when we start mixing the two. So let's get into currying before we start mixing them. We can curry this normal function. So I'll show you the curry function at the end of the video. It's not important as far as how it works. You just need to know that it takes an argument or it takes a function and returns a version of that function that has been curried. So in other words, that function is going to accept each argument one at a time, returning a function each time until it has all the arguments and then return the evaluated function body. So what that looks like if we invoke a curried function is giving it all of its arguments individually, and then that will give us back the return value. But we could partially apply a curried function by only giving it two of its arguments and assigning that returned function to a new variable, and then we could use that somewhere else. So again, this kind of makes it look like partial application and currying are the same thing because we were passing individual arguments in, we're still passing individual arguments in, but in this case, because we're only giving it some of its arguments, it's partially applying a curried function as opposed to just invoking a curried function. And so just as a note here, partially applied curried function, or curried sum for numbers uh, is a function, and that's because it's still expecting the next value for the next argument, which is the third argument, and then it'll return another function expecting the fourth. And so we give it those values down here, and now it's been fully applied, so to speak, and that will give us the actual evaluated function body. Now, we can start mixing them. We can curry a partially applied function. So we have partially applied some four numbers. So this is where we used bind above, and we gave it one and two. So partially applied some four numbers knows about one and two, but it's expecting a pair of three and four as its uh, next invocation. If you just gave it a three, it wouldn't have all its arguments and it would still try to return, but it wouldn't have that fourth argument. So we'd be trying to add one, two, and three to undefined. But if we curry it, we're going to take it from accepting this pair to accepting the arguments individually. And so to invoke the curried partially applied function, we do exactly that. We give it the three and then we give it the four, but we pass them in one at a time and then we get the new results of 10. And then whoop, we can do the opposite, which is where we, oh, I wrote, this was the opposite. All right, never mind. <laughs> we can partially apply a curried function or we can curry a partially applied function, but you can see that it ends up being the same thing. Where at the, the end of the day, the function is curried, meaning that that function knows that it's curried, it behaves like it's curried, and it's been partially applied. And once you've curried a function, it's it doesn't really matter if it never was, if it wasn't curried before that, it's going to, from that point on, behave in a way where it only accepts one argument at a time. And that's why line 63 and line 52 essentially look the same, except that we have partially applying a curried function versus 
querying a partially applied function. Okay, and now a quick introduction to exactly what's going on in this query function. If you're happy just understanding the difference between partial application and currying, perfect. You can basically end the video here. I'd recommend checking out that original video about partial application if you're curious. Otherwise, I'm just going to spend a minute or two here explaining curry so that you can play around with it. You'll only want to use this function because I didn't feel like including a requirement for an external library. So normally you won't write your own curry function. You'll include a library like Lodash or Ramda or something like that. And you'll use partial application and currying provided by those libraries. Those are going to be properly optimized and all those sorts of things. Uh, but for a simple introduction to what this does, it just takes a function and optionally takes an arity. So that would be if you have optional arguments, for example, curry doesn't know that those arguments are optional. It just knows how many arguments that function takes. So you need to signal if it takes four arguments, but you're only going to provide three because the fourth one's optional. You need to let curry know to evaluate the function body after three arguments instead of four. So that's why you pass that in. Uh, and then it just returns gather args, which is just a recursive function that just keeps accepting arguments. So if it has any arguments so far, they get assigned into this all args list. And each time, it's just going to increment the step or the loop, whatever you want to call it, the iteration that it's at. And if the current uh, step that it's at is equal to the arity, then it's going to evaluate the function that was passed in with all of the arguments that it's received. Otherwise, it's just going to return a function that accepts the next value for the next argument and then recursively calls itself so that it can receive that new argument, increment the step, and pass in all the args as per the previous iteration. And so that's how you create curry. Again, no guarantees that this is extremely well optimized or anything like that, uh, but it works just fine for what we're using in this video. And just to show you how this works, if we want, when we call curry up here, we could, because this function already is expecting two arguments, as you can see on line 64 here, if we were to run this with two passed in, it behaves the same way. If we actually console log something, nope, oh, I don't know how that happened. Eh? All right, cool. It behaves exactly the same, but if we were to say only accept one argument, then the four is going to be a problem because we're trying to give it two arguments, but it's only accepting one. And if we say accept three arguments, we've only given it, given it two, so it's still going to be a function waiting for the value for that next argument. And that's how arity works. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, subscribe if you want to see more like it. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions and suggestions for future videos. I'm always open to that. Appreciate hearing from everybody. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.